Welcome back, guys. We're back with a brand new episode. Episode two. This is going to be called Idaho Student Murders. Let me get that correct. Yeah, the Idaho Student Murders. Um, and I wanted to deep dive about this investigation. Um, there was a lot of videos that she sent. Um, there is, uh, I guess <laughs> you could say HBO specials about this. And other videos on this case. Uh, it was very interesting. Um, but yeah, so Anna, um, go ahead and you lead this investigation for us. Well, hey everyone. Um, I'm again. I'm sorry about last week. I was struggling a lot, but I'm back. Um, and today, like DJ said, we're going to talk about the Idaho student murders. So this happened in 2022 in November. Um, the tr case is still ongoing. They do have a suspect. But uh, we're just going to cover, you know, who the, who the victims were, you know, the leading up to the murders and uh, maybe a little bit about after the murders and how uh, they caught the suspect. So the murders took place um, in Moscow, Idaho, at the University of Idaho. Um, and it's important to know that there's about, I want to say, like, three different states involved in this, um, and I'll get to that later, but, so, there are four victims, um, and are you guys comfortable with me saying them? Because, I mean, like, they're all over. Sure. It's, like, mm -hmm. a pivotal, a pivotal <clears throat> um, part, of, part of this case. Yeah, go ahead, let's, um, yeah, go ahead, and, um, um, yeah. So, our victims are Kaylee Gonsalves. She was 21 when she was murdered, and she is from Rathrum, Idaho, we have Madison Mogan. She was also 21 from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, there's Ethan Chapin. From t uh, he's 20. He was 20 from Conway, Washington. And the last victim, her name was Zana Cronodal. She was also 20, and she is from Avondale, Arizona. Um, and from my understanding, uh, Zana and Ethan were a couple, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Zana and Ethan were dating, and Maddie and Kaylee, they were best friends. All of the videos I watched, um, the both of the parents always um, they considered Maddie and, and Kaylee sisters. Maddie's an only child. Kaylee has a couple sisters, um, and so it was like whenever wherever one went, the other followed. And um, they were they were like so close to each other that they even made like a powerpoint to explain why they should go to the same high school together that's and, crazy and they the same college together just um, i i wish i had a friend like that no actually i did i had a <laughs> i had a best friend like i tried to get him to go to er every elementary school that i went to junior high high school um only elementary school and high school we went to the same school for a little bit um that's crazy uh yeah like making a powerpoint i should have yeah. thought about that <laughs> um so i want to talk a little bit about the dynamic of the house um i believe uh there were six roommates um six like uh original roommates so there was kaylee maddie Zana. um throughout this whole case the two others there's there's three others but Two of them are known, one of them is unknown, so I'll reference them as B and DM. So there's B, DM, and then another unknown roommate. So there's six altogether. Um, Maddie, or not Maddie, Kaylee had actually moved out because she, um, she, I believe she graduated early and had an internship in Austin, Texas, and was visiting for the weekend. Um, so... Um, as of the case, there are five people living in that house. Um, so, where should I go next? What? Where should I go? So, so let's talk about the lead up to the murders. Yeah. So, um, from the, this HBO Max special, special or episode, I keep saying special episode about this, uh, about this case. Um, that house was very popular, I would say. Um, 
and by the university uh, that they were going to. Um, so there was like parties like every night uh, from my, from what I remember. And they were, that house was always getting complaints from the neighbors. And when cops would show up, there was like no proof of what, who was staying there. Like who, who was like pretty much in charge of what's going on. And the cops would tell them, Hey, uh, you guys need to tone it down. Can you turn off the music? There's complaints, this and that. And I'm trying to remember who was, who was there on one of those nights. Um, one of those nights, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 you're good, you're but, good. Um, one of those nights, it was Kaylee and, uh, during the, there was like an incident during the day and that was Kaylee. That's but right, that okay. night was Nana. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Um, um uh, <laughs> no, you're good. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to see because like it, that house is just I don't know the house is just like it. it's kind of it's kind of sad to even think about the house right now on how everything was it, it, it was like pretty much like an apartment right um I mean it was a house I can talk about um, where each of them were found but we can I mean I'll let's let's, let's let's lead up to to okay. the night of um, um, you want to talk about it or do you want me to? Go ahead. Go ahead. That's fine. Okay. Um, so the murders happened early November 13th. So all of these events until I mentioned, you know, the date change will be happening on November 12th. Um, so since Maddie and Kaylee were 21, they were at a bar called the Corner Club. Um, Ethan was a member of the St. Mackay fraternity. So him and Zana were at the party at the house um and it's important to note that um google map says it is about a 12 minute walk um but there's also a picture of the road and there's a girl and everyone thinks it's xana which is really grim to see on google maps and um walking through the grass the walk from the house to the same Mackay frat is about two to three minutes so um not that long i mean if you really want to take Google Maps, it'll take you 12 minutes. But if you want to cut across the grass, it's not that long. Um, so that's where they were the like that night. So if we want to get really technical, early November 13th, Maddie and Kaylee were seen at a popular food truck called the Grub Truck at around 1.41 a.m. on a Twitch live stream. And I looked a couple days ago and that Twitch account is still alive and active. Um, which is really, I don't know, it's really weird to me to know that, like, that Twitch wait, account captured someone's, like, last moments. Wait, it's, so, like, so weird. why, why was it being, like, wait, there's a Twitch account live streaming them? Or? No, it wasn't live streaming them, it was live streaming their business. Probably for, like, security reasons or something. It's, like, it's basically, like, a live stream of, like, a security camera. But who's, whose business? The, the club? It, no, it's a it's a different business. It's called the Grub Truck. Oh, the gr oh, yeah. Okay. Um, let me see if I can pull so, up a picture of it. Um. Okay. So, August sixteenth, twenty twenty two. Um, uh, there was complaint about about the the house being very like noisy, and yeah. the cop went. And this is this is what uh, kind of like what I get what I gathered right. So August sixteenth, a uh, cop went to go respond to noise complaint. Uh, he knocked on the back sliding door, and um, the person that answered was Kaylee. And then September first, there was another complaint. Um, when the cops went to that uh, that noise complaint, there was no there was no tenants that were there that you know that that lived there and all that and um so the, it just shows like there was like parties almost like not every night i guess you could say but uh there was a lot of complaints noise complaints there were a lot of a lot of you know suspects that like when when i was watching yeah. this i'm like hmm okay there's like why why is the focus on the sliding door right um yeah from where 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 I grew up, uh, 
I made sure, like, my parents made sure, like, every door was, like, locked. Uh, we even had, like, a, um, like, a stick, a very, like, a wooden, very sturdy stick onto the sliding door. That way, even if you break the sliding door window, there's no way you can move that sliding room. Yeah. Plus, we could hear it. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, those are the complaints that I, that I gathered about that house. Nice. We hate that. Anyway, um, so I found the Twitch account. This is this is where, like, if you're watching the live, can you is the is the podcast like on Discord? Like, can they see this? No, no. But you you can send me a picture and I can I can share oh. it. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll just send you one after. Yep. All right. I'll stop streaming then. Um. So, basically, um, after Maddie and Kaylee left the grub truck, um, they took a ride share home at around 1.56 a.m. So, they were at the food truck. So, from the time they were seen at the food truck and the time that they took the ride share home, they were out for about, I believe it's 15 minutes. The math is right. Yeah, 15 minutes. Um, and... Everyone is like kind of suspicious about. There's a couple people at the at the grub truck that people were kind of suspicious about, but they've all been cleared, so um, that's that. Um, Ethan and Zana got home to the eleven twenty two King Road house, which is the address of where they lived, at around one forty five. So all the roommates or everyone that lived in that house was home. At around 2 a.m. So, what happened between 2 and 4, um, I believe is unknown, unless you guys have heard something. But um, around 4, Xana placed a jack-in-the-box order um, and then spent some time on TikTok. There is a screenshot of Xana commenting on someone's TikTok, and the date is 11-13-2022. So, um, we don't know when she commented that, but that was also really, like, uneasy um to see you know so like let's so that that night right of what happened or the morning of so the the night before uh kaylee posted a photo of, of all four of them and that photo i remember seeing going around like on twitter and um i didn't think nothing of it right like, I, I seen the photo and i seen it being like spread around on twitter and like, you know, it was scary or, you know, some comments of stuff like that. And, um, looking, you know, when I was watching the special and seeing that photo, it gave me chills because I didn't know nothing of it. It's like, it's like seeing like the last photo of your friends or your family members. And you're like, huh, that's very interesting. Why is, why is photo of my friends or family being spread? And you're like, they're not my friends. I don't know. No, I don't know any of them you know, personally, but it's just, just the fact that like, looking back two years ago of what happened and seeing that photo of all four of them, it, it, it gives me chills. And even thinking about it right now, like talking about it, I'm getting chills ab about what happened to them. Um, yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's just really sad. And they're, they're, they're very young. Um, and I, I know we're getting close to the part of this, of what happened, but the, the lead up to what happened, um, it is is just like very detailed when uh, on this episode of the uh, HBO Max of Thido murder, um, they're very detailed of what happened, like the time frame of her. Uh, they said DoorDash. You're right. You got that note down, or was it DoorDash or was it Grubhub? It was DoorDash. DoorDash. Yeah, it was like at four or something in the morning. Um, yeah, Jack in the Box. And then TikTok. Um, there were some other things I, I forgot to note that down. I thought I did, um, but yeah. But uh, go ahead, continue. Sorry, I I, I just I just wanted to talk about I... the about the photo. It's just it's just yeah. Fuck. Yeah, hair just really, sticking up in my arms. It's really like unsettling because the caption of Kaylee's photo was "One lucky girl to be surrounded by these people every day," and not even twenty four hours later that four of them are dead in that picture so it's just 
just really weird to see. Um, so at around 11.59 a.m. that morning, November 13th, a 911 call was placed from inside the home about an unconscious person. So this would clock that about eight hours after the murders, which don't even get me started on that. Like, I could, it's whatever. Um, so this house, there were three floors. Um, I'm going to just talk about where everyone was kind of found all the victims. So, Zan and Ethan were found on the second floor. Maddie and Kaylee were found on the third floor. Um, DM lived on the second floor, and B lived on the ground floor. And it's also important to note that Kaylee's dog, Murphy, was found in a room behind a closed door, and he was unharmed. And I think that Murphy was on the third floor, the same floor as Maddie and Kaylee. I believe he was kind of locked in the room in Kaylee's old room um so just like initial initial thoughts from the surviving roommates DM and B well there's not much about not much from B um DM says that she saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth and nose walking towards her uh he was around 5'10 male not very muscular but she said he was athletically built with bushy eyebrows. Um, so, like DJ said in the beginning, it was very unknown just who really lived in that house. Um, and it says that DM locked herself in her room after seeing him because she didn't recognize him. And so for them to be having all these people coming in and DM not recognizing this person, that just, that's just weird. Um, so, if you guys want to talk about yeah, why it took them so long to call the police, you can definitely talk about that. So, so I, make me angry. I, I kind of want to talk about that night. Yeah. Um, and what the cops found. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I'm nervous to talk about this, but so when they got the call and when they arrived, the details of that. Of the of what they seen was so brutal. It was just, uh, it was they they stated that it was the most bloodiest, gruesome murder that they ever seen. Um, the, of the, of that police force, there was blood everywhere. Um, where it the blood bled through the walls. That's how bad it was. It was very very gruesome um and from what i gathered of that friend because there was there were six people there four bodies right of uh, the college students that were that were that were murdered and the two that survived that's what i got it was two that two that survived one of them heard noises right um she she th the first one she thought she heard Kaylee was playing with her dog um and then she heard someone said uh that someone's here that like it, it's you know trying you know thinking about that like let's say you're just you're just, you're just laying right and you're, you're hearing noises and like for me I'm like you know what the hell is going on like who's that I'm very cautious with what, what I hear when I'm at home especially alone um, but just to hear like n noises that someone's that, that you think your friend or your roommate's playing with their dog or their cat or, or whatever. Um, and then you hear someone say, someone's here, like me out. Like I would go check like, Hey, who, who's here? Um, and then she heard someone say, it's okay. I'm here to help you. Like wow, like that's that 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 is just really, really creepy. Um, so those are a couple times that she she was opening her door to check. The third time that she opened her door, she saw a man, um, all in black walking towards her. So it, the the house is dark, and all you see is this this silhouette or this 
this black figure just walking up to you. I was picturing like um like a like a horror movie, like a demon just walking up to you. I mean, the guy is is a is a devil pretty much, right? Um so he was walking towards her and then she passed then he passed by her walking out the back door. That's what the investigators were saying that he walked out the back door. So that back door like how did he knew to go through that back door, right? How how do you know how did he knew it was so easy to open the door for no one to hear that door open? That was a, the back sliding door. Um it it it's it's crazy and um we'll we'll get into about the whole murder of what happened to those those four kids those four students but um that part was very detailed and and it like he knew who he wanted to attack um i don't know if he seen her oh like cr like open, cracking the door open or like you know, what I mean, like I say, it was, it was already dark as it is. So like, I don't know. It, it's just I burped. Sorry, excuse me. Um, it's just like like he knew who he knew he wanted. Uh, curls. What 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 are, what are your thoughts on on everything? Like right on this part that we're talking about. Well, just you know, taking in the information you guys are talking about right now. I, I still find it just absurd that the two other people that were in the house didn't hear a brutal murder. I don't get that at all. Mm -hmm. um, that makes no sense. Especially of four people. Like, if it was one person, you know what I mean? Then maybe. Like, I get that because someone could go in and just do it kind of discreetly, I guess, and it wouldn't make a lot of noise, but... To just be bouncing around to four different people, just that it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know how anybody didn't hear that. Um, yeah, and and the, and then the idea of you know somebody seeing the guy and giving them a very specific description of vibrados and shit. Like I'm sure that's possible. That might have happened, but I don't know why that guy wouldn't try to kill her at that point, unless he just didn't see her at all. Yeah, okay. yeah, and, and that's and that's what I was saying. Like, you know, it was probably like I said. Well, I said it was dark. You know, it was dark that night. I don't know if they had the lights on. I don't know if they didn't explain that, but I'm assuming it was very dark in the house. So yeah, let me go retract back that to that part. Um, but seeing the man all in black. So, um, I can't remember if they who described the person or what happened. Um, but I know how they found out who that guy was um but but like you know i don't want to say it's like you know it's not it's like common sense or anything but but like you said like if you're hearing noises of what happened if you're, you're hearing weird noise that you, you don't recognize would you go investigate that unless you know mm -hmm. she could be very very scared like her like you know seeing a ghost right like you're just you're just like in shock your body doesn't know what to do or you're scared because you're hearing these weird noises but uh this man uh they said the time frame of everything that happened took 16 minutes mm -hmm. so that's on average of like a four minute unaliving someone um yeah and uh I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, Xana was found on the second floor. Ethan uh, was next to her, I think. And then the next two females were Kaylee and Maddie. I believe it was like on the th third floor that they were found. Yeah. The yeah, so second floor it was Xana and Ethan. They were found together. I don't like that's just crazy. Like I I don't I'm not thinking about going back to to what what happened to them. Like this guy this guy knew what he was doing. Cuz if it if it took 16 minutes, I think the the um, investigator said like that was the fastest that uh that they found 
of how long it took to murder someone in, in that household of that many people is very it was very fast um so like he knew what he what he wanted and who he wanted to attack but I just don't know like why them why them I, I don't I don't know so Maddie was actually like complaining of a, a stalker leading up to this so everyone believes that Maddie was the main target and I mean obviously Kaylee was right next to her so then Kaylee and then I'm not too sure why the other two were part of this either um but everyone thinks um that Maddie was the main subject the main target of all this yeah and unfortunately the the, tri the his trial so the person that did all this was named Brian Kohlberger right yeah yeah Brian Kohlberger um so let's let's kind of let's, let's discuss about him what, what do you know about him um Anna all right so he is a well he was a PH student going to the university or I don't don't remember what the college Washington was, called. was it Washington State? Was yeah. Washington State Washington University, State University. Yeah. Um, and mm. he was ironically majoring in criminology um what's interesting about him was that for his um graduate program he did a study on ex-criminals and how they committed their crimes so it was like some of his questions were like um, how did you prepare for the crime? Like, did you know this person? Like, things like that. So when you really think about what he has allegedly done, um, it's just really well, crazy. So and... it's not, so yeah, they're ex-criminals, but there weren't, like, they're, if they're not, they were murderers. They they were, they were psychopaths. So that's who he studied were, were murderers that were, um, pretty much, you know, locked up. He went to go pick their mind. He went to go study their minds, study what they did, and he was asking like, "How did you do this? What did you do? You know, stuff like that." So he he already had an idea on what he wanted to do. If if he was already asking them, right? So like he just wanted right. an idea. So that's what I got from from that episode was that he was just he was so into all like murders, and yeah. and that's how like he got the idea was from like from going to school and and he was just studying all this and i was like that's crazy and and on top of that um i think he read a book about something from an, an author i can't remember who it was but there there's there's so much information on him on what he was doing and I think he had a master's degree in something and he was going for his PhD. I can't, I can't remember. And he was young too. He was very young. He was like, I think his mid twenties. Um, he grew up in, uh, East Pennsylvania. Um, the night. So the, so a few, I believe a few days before the murder, Brian was pretty much scoping out the place he uh they were tracking his phone on on brian the way the way how they knew it was brian let, let's talk about how they found out who 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 did it it was uh they found a leather sheath uh next to one of the bodies they didn't find no murder weapon of this on the scene they, they didn't find nothing on like what what the murder used on the students but on, on one of the bodies, I forgot whose body it was. It doesn't matter. It, it, it was next to a body. It was a leather sheath. Do you, do you remember that, Anna? Yeah, it was next to Maddie. Next to Maddie. Yep. Um, so, yeah. So, they found DNA on the the clip that hold that held the knife. And they ran the DNA in a match to Brian. And they were... Well, what they, what they did was they took a sample from... The trash can at Brian's home in Pennsylvania, mm. and it matched 
Well, I let's, believe it matched his father. Hold on, let's 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 wait, 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 let's wait, let's on. let's start from wait, 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 wait. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me say one thing about that. So they got Brian's dad. They looked at his trash, and they found DNA on this trash. And then they were saying that whoever's DNA was on the sheath, it would be a statistical some type of match that would be, you know, related to him. And that's how right. they kind of got it once they matched it up with Brian. Yeah. yeah. So what, what I was going to get get at was leading up to that home in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um. So they found the DNA on that on that sheath. And how like they they got to match. So uh, Brian picked up his dad and was going on a road trip across country. Um, I went back home. Well, he was in Washington. So think he was in Washington, and this was in in Idaho. So like you see how like how far distance was from each other. I know like, I think the states were near each other. I can't remember oh. my. Washington State University and University of Idaho are eleven minutes. Well, he he was he was in in Washington too. He was in Washington. Yeah, but it's a, he was eleven minutes from the University of Idaho. Yeah, but like the, just just the the distance, right? Even though it's eleven minutes, it's like he was he, he was scoping out the place, like he like the the track of his phone. Um, was showing the time frame of what he was doing for for a few days, right? And then going to Pennsylvania cross country with his father, he got stopped a couple times during a traffic stop because he was tailgating someone, and a cop pulled him over. The dad was on the passenger side. Um, Brian was driving, and like, hey, you know, you you're you're um you're tailgating. You gotta be careful. Gave him a warning. Brian said, cool, took off again. Um, Brian got pulled over, I think, by the same cop. He's like, hey, you know, I already gave you a warning. You got, you need to stop tailgating. I'm going to let you go. <laughs> Boom. So, Good old Indiana. Huh? Good old Indiana. Um, That's where he was stopped. So they were, already, they were already watching him. They were, they were just trying to find, like, a perfect reason to get him, right? Because, like, the DNA showed, but like like Curl said, um, they they found the matching DNA. The reason how they found it was um, Brian was cleaning out his whole car. He was he was detailing his car, sanitizing everything, and he threw some trash away. And I believe there was gloves that they found. And that's how it. That's how they got it. And that's when they raided the, the house. That's what I got. That's how they knew how everything matched, and it was Brian. Yeah. Another thing I'll add to that too was the way the way I watched. Right, the thing on YouTube where I watched, it didn't blatantly say, "Oh, his fingerprint was on that thing." When what I got from it was just like, "Oh, there's a high likelihood that." You know, these pieces of somewhat DNA, right? Like, they match up a little bit, right? Like, the statistical rate of it would be high. They didn't say blatantly, like, oh, it's his fingerprints. It's him. They're just saying, like, there was just a high chance that it was. And I thought that was very weird wording on how to do it. Um, Especially whenever you take into consideration everything else that's going into, like, a potential trial at some point, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because of course they have a defense against everything. Yeah, and just the reasoning behind. That, I mean, obviously it looks weird, but I just found it strange that it was like, oh no, it wasn't just flat on his fingerprint. It was just like, oh, there's a likelihood, like a high chance that it matches with him, and it would be him. And it's just like, okay, well, what does that do though? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, and also he didn't have any criminal history, so. They uh, it sounds like stupid to say, but they like put it in a, a database to search for relatives, and mm -hmm. that's how they uh, that's how they have probable cause to raid the house. Well, and also he, the night of when he no was it 
yeah, the night of, I think before or after, he uh, put his phone on airplane mode to not be tracked. Mm-hmm. So he already had an idea, like, oh, I, this is how I'm not going to get caught. You know, was putting his phone from his from where he lived at, at an apartment and then going to the house he uh he put his phone um on on airplane mode and then i guess there was uh street cameras that got the picture of his vehicle um so well, that's it was like of a suspicious vehicle so they were looking for uh like a 2014 2013 2014 it was all, yeah it was all white well yeah the, um did he did he take his he took his license license plate off too, I think afterwards on his road trip with his dad or something like that. Um, but the 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 car, the car that they got was that like they it, it was like every single time that he was scoping out the house, observing it and all that. Um, and I thought that's what the traffic stop was for, but um, it wasn't. But the car match to where they when they raided the house um that's all i got that's all i know about um the only thing i know about him he's still on trial or they they keep pushing back the trial i think the police in indiana knew who he was just because this case hadn't been you know what's the word like like when someone gets murdered not every not every police department knows about it so at this point probably um, the Indiana State Police didn't didn't know. He, they just figured this was a normal traffic stop. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I don't think it was. Oh, I would say it was a country right, country wide to where like, hey, we're looking for this suspect. Right. Um, right. At least not yet. Yeah. I so I don't think it was like it was at that point yet. They were just still investigating who, like who <laughs> was the suspect, and then. The the car matched the description, um, and there's pretty much just probably just following it up, leading up to the house, and then and that's when they they dumped, they, they went to dumpster diving and they found some stuff that, like what Crows was talking about, um, but it this whole time I was thinking okay it was probably someone. From one of their their parties. That's that's what I was like, kind of. I thought that was gonna lead up to that, um, but when they were talking about this guy, I was like, oh, you know, he he even looks crazy. Yeah, he looks very fucking creepy. Uh, girl, so go ahead, girls, go go ahead and, and discuss what your thoughts are on this investigation. Um, well, there's a, uh, one key point we didn't really go further into about, um, you know, the stalker situation, yeah. right? Um, one thing that I found very interesting was, and I'm blanking on names, I am not good with names at all. Um, one of the victims, their parents, um, you know, they did a little investigating once they found out who this person was that potentially killed their daughter. And they found this guy's, I believe, Instagram page, if I'm not wrong. Oh. Um, and they noticed that he liked a bunch of pictures from that girl that was one of the victims. I didn't know about that. Um, yeah, so this was a part of that YouTube uh, doc that I watched okay. last night. So I found that interesting. But of course, immediately, they kind of had... They kind of threw up some red flags. They're like, okay, well, was this page created as soon as the guy's name got released, right? Did somebody just create the page and just like a bunch of pictures, and then they're just trying to make him look, you know, worse than what happened, right? Because we don't know exactly, right, if the guy did it or not. We we have our opinions, and we know, like, okay, well, it kind of does look like it. But, um so the yeah the family had that biggest concern they're not sure if the page was legit or not um and apparently the dad he was working for an it company i think he still is or he was at the time of them investigating this and um yeah he wasn't 100 percent positive that it was legit but the other weird thing was he the guy was following two of the victims um on that said page and then um I believe 
one of the girls or both of the girls were following him back or something. So Ooh. that was like that was like their link to thinking like it was a legit page. But of course, you know, the more investigating they did and they went on different posts to see what was going on, all this stuff, eventually the page actually got deleted from uh, Instagram. So what that does, I have no idea. Um, I think it just kind of puts another piece of information for our opinion to kind of look at it and be like, well, that is kind of strange. You know, if this is the actual guy, um, I think it matches that narrative that he did it. Right. And mm -hmm. somebody had a stalker and the guy was just like obsessed with this girl. Um, but you have to be, you know, a hundred percent honest with yourself at the end of the day. Right. Like we don't know, like I said, if he actually did it or not. And yeah, I just thought that right there was uh, a big piece that not a lot of people um, knew about potentially. I, I did not know about that. That just adds more to this creepy feeling. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, because I, I remember uh, Maddie, another girl, I'm sorry, I can't remember their names. Maddie, Kay Kaylee, Kaylee, Anna, Ethan. Maddie and Kaylee, best friends, right? They would post on TikTok a lot. So, um, it's not to diss social media. I'm on social media all, every single day. If I can't sleep, I'm looking through some conspiracy theories on TikTok or watching cook cooking videos. But that's another way of like exposure of of yourself. Um. And not saying like it's their fault, but like, oh! but There's a spider on my desk. <laughs> um, but like, girls, going back to what you're saying, you know, like with Instagram, you know, what if this guy was like he already knew? Mm -hmm. I, if I'm not mistaken, I I believe Snapchat, TikTok, would be like, hey, you know, on your for you page, whatever you're watching, then no, that's Snapchat, Instagram, Instagram, and, and TikTok. Whatever you currently watch, your for you page is going to show you of that same type of video or similar to that video of that mm -hmm. that content creator. So, what if he was like? Because you you say he 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 made an Instagram page and liked her photos and she followed him back, right? One of the friends. I believe so. So that little piece right there of them following him back, um, I'm almost positive that was a thing, but I could be wrong. I could have uh, not paid attention correctly, but 100% though, uh, the parents found that he followed a couple of the victims and that he liked multiple pictures of one of them. Oh, <laughs> that's so creepy. So, I, I... Yeah, and then that's a weird thing with Instagram now. Like, growing up, um, what was it? Like, I don't think it showed you who liked the photo, like displayed it on your page like a while ago. This is when Instagram yeah. was like first popping oh, back. Oh, like, like 2011, 2012? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I like, remember. They would show the likes. Oh, and then they'll geez. show you an activity feed of like the people who liked it, but you wouldn't see exactly who liked it. Yeah, but then yeah. over time, they started exposing people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you started looking at like, you know, girls in bikinis or something right you're like oh this person like they're like oh my god what are you looking at dude? caught you on 4k you know? <laughs> yeah dude literally so okay so that's how they were able to put that together uh, dude so okay so, and then they're like oh yeah he liked all these pictures and it's like Ugh. so let's just say it's me assuming what if he was obsessed over them because like every yeah every killer's mind is like it's fifty one fifty. It's like mm -hmm. there's an obsession of the reason why, like him studying murderers and posting on Reddit too. On top of that, he I forgot to put that uh, in there was that he also posted on Reddit. Um, I like. I wonder, like, it, let's say if he was obsessed with these students, how did he knew? where they lived that's a that's the piece i i don't i didn't get was like when i was watching and they were discussing what he was doing and if it if this was him you know in his car 
scoping out the place, how did he knew where? And if he was, if he if he did follow them, and you know they follow each other back, and he was liking their posts, how did he knew where where they lived? Um, that's that's mm-hmm. that's a piece that I want to know. Like why? Like why did he follow them in the first place? Why was he obsessed with them? How did he knew where they live? Yeah, I think that's what makes it interesting in a way, right? Yeah. Is what was the obsession? Um, what lengths did he go to to figure out the location of you know where this girl was? Because at the end of the day, I feel like that's what it was. Um, and just my own personal opinion on this whole case, right? He was obsessed with one person. And other people just happen to be there. Um, <laughs> I don't know if there was a jealousy aspect of the other three in particular that were like close to this one individual. I don't know that. And of course, I don't think anybody will ever know that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there is quite a bit to that, right? And kind of linking to everything else with this guy, right? Him kind of learning about, you know you know, criminal stuff, right? Him having all this time in college to figure all that shit out. He he seems and comes off as a smart guy, right? I think mm-hmm. that's kind of just known, right? Um, and he absorbed all this knowledge and he probably understood a way to figure out, okay, well, here's how I might not get caught from this. Here would be an easy way to have an alibi on things and this, this, and that, right? I think it was very planned. I can't imagine that this was something that was spur of the moment from some random attacker. That makes no sense to me at all. Um, Especially, you know, like you were talking about earlier, how somebody went in there and committed these murders so quickly. And if nobody heard it, like, let's say if that's the case, too. Like, if nobody actually heard, like, all this going down, and they just are very specific things, like little things. Then this guy was very well trained in that, right? He knew what he was doing. He was like, he wanted to get in and out of there. And the fact that there was like hard, like no evidence really, right? They have the sheath, they have the little DNA sample thing on there, but that's it. Like there's nothing else at all. And I think that's what makes it more bizarre was the only thing that they can latch on to is that she they have nothing else against that guy Mm -hmm. they have no other there's no blood there's nothing there's literally nothing on him that they could say like oh you did this they only have that one thing yeah and that's it yeah i I don't know if that's gonna be enough to do anything um another i i guess you could say kind of kind of somewhat of evidence was the shoe print they found um, mm-hmm. but I don't think they found the shoe. I think th- all they got from that trash can that they checked was just the cleaning products that he had and gloves. Mm-hmm. And then the gloves is what <laughs> is what they're trying to match with with the DNA. Um, but like. I, I'm trying to figure out about the father too. The father, like you know, w- wouldn't he be in custody for being like about his son? I don't know. I'm I'm like I'm I'm like open my mind more of like, okay, what if there's more? There was more than one person. Because 16 minutes, that's kind of crazy. And like especially like not hearing the friends, not like the other two girls are like, what's going on? Like there's these noises that I'm the weird noises, you know, like. That you don't hear, like you've never heard before. That's what I'm saying. Like going back to what I'm saying, it's like, uh, for me, if there's a new noise that I, I hear in my home, I'm gonna go investigate it. It's like I don't recognize yeah, yeah. that noise. So it, it's, I don't, I don't know. Like, like, and like I said too, if you're hearing some creepy noise, your body's gonna go in shock, and you don't know what to do at the same time. Especially seeing some, a shadow walking up to you. You're gonna freeze, like, oh crap! Who is this person coming up to me in my own home? Yeah, so that, that those are my thoughts. It's just, I, I, if it is him, you know, like that, like 
there's really, like you said, there's not enough evidence besides of what they have. Uh, I don't, I don't even think they even have, they have the knife. Do, do you remember them saying they have the knife? That, no, no nope. weapon was found. Just the knife. Yeah, sheet. see, like that was the one thing I found too. Was there was I don't know if she was a defense lawyer or something, but you know how they talk to the like, random people and yeah. stuff, whatever. Um, she was saying, you know, whenever the guy chose to, you know, go to trial and all that, and didn't want to proceed with a fast like thing, um. You know, she was saying that a lot of people thought this case was going to be a slam dunk. They're like, oh, they found the guy. They have this, this, and that, possibly, and they can just piece it all together. And she's like, it's not a slam dunk at all. Because the only thing that they have is that chief and a little bit of the evidence that it could be linked up to him. And outside of that, they found nothing else on him. They found no blood. They found nothing else that would link him to that murder. So his defense could start basically creating alibis for every little you know motion that was going on throughout this whole time period that of course you know the people that are going to represent the victims they're gonna you know try to put them away forever and all that good stuff mm -hmm. and you know his the defense is going to be like oh no well this is what happened this is where he was this is what was going on this this, and that and I, yeah it's going to be a very tough time i think putting that dude away very hard Mm -hmm. They need to figure out something that's like so obvious that he did it. They need to find something. Like the shoe print thing. If they found the shoes and it was his or something, blood, something, you know. It, like it, they gotta they gotta figure something out with that because that dude's not gonna go away. Well, and then on top of the whole description of what they seen at the scene of the in the rooms and, and they say how gruesome it was was there any footprints of you know blood on the on the carpet um y you know what I mean like what if what if they were fighting back and they scratched him wouldn't mm. wouldn't there be DNA underneath their fingernails you know stuff like that like piece of hair follicle just fo on on uh on on the bed sheets like you know what I mean like like I I don't know it's just it's just hard it's now looking at it, it's kind of hard to say like let's say if it wasn't him who who would it be exactly and that's the thing they don't from my understanding they don't think it's anybody else like it's literally just linked up to him and you got to think once it goes to trial or whatever you know they're gonna have whatever go on but. They can just go in circles and think like ex boyfriends, people that they might have made mad over. Like you know what I mean? Like they can just go down a rabbit hole and mm -hmm. try to think it was somebody else if they can't figure out if it's this guy. But in my opinion, I feel they think it's this guy and there's nobody else, and they have to figure out everything in their power to make sure that it's him, and they put him away. Mm -hmm. But I just don't think they have a solid enough case quite yet. But. Mm -hmm. If he's able to get away with that and it's actually him still, like, that's the craziest shit I've ever heard. I don't, I don't know how often that's happened ever, you know, with any type of cases that involves murder where they think they found their guy and it was him and he was able to figure out a way to where it made it look like it wasn't him and they got away with it. Like, I don't know anything that's ever been like that. And, I feel with this case, he has a high chance of getting off from this, and I don't, I don't know if they're gonna have anything to really put him away at all. Yeah. Um, Anna, I, I think you said you might have like an assumption of who could it be or who could have helped. I remember you talking about about that. Was that? Yeah, you said that you, it might be someone, or you feel like there's someone else, or there's someone that was involved with this. I remember you were you were, you were talking about that, like a friend. Was I really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't remember that. Oh no. <laughs> I I do want to talk about the roommates though, just to, just for like a little. Like okay. A um, I just think it's very weird how um the roommates didn't 
call until eight hours later. Like, I understand being scared and stuff, but, like, from what I heard, the walls in the house were super thin, so do you not hear, like, your four friends literally getting stabbed to death? Like, what do you guys think about yeah, that? Yeah, that, well, that's what we were talking about earlier. Like, I, I think that was one of the first things I started saying on the podcast today. Like, that was my biggest, like, how is that even possible? Like, you should be able to hear people getting stabbed in your own house. Like, that's just insane. Like, does that um, make you suspect the roommates of something? Or, like, what do you um, think? Well, it's like what DJ said. And sometimes your body could lock up and you don't know what to do. I, we've all had that happen to us before. Mm-hmm. Um, did they really just not hear anybody get murdered? Like, I don't know. Um, how... Have the... I, it's just it's a tough one, um, especially because what kind of plays into that more, right? Was how long it took for anybody to call like nine one one or anything. I think that aspect is what kind of makes it more interesting. If we're gonna try to have an opinion on if the roommates had something to do with it, well, I I I might be wrong, but from what I gather from from the friends or. There was a nine one one call from a phone near a body or one of the friends, and that's how they got the call. That someone tried to make an attempt for a nine one one call. I might be wrong. I might have misheard that information, uh, and that's how they were able to go to the house. To, and, and 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 that's when they seen everything. Um, it, you know, it might be one reporter reporting something different about the phone nine one one phone call. I don't know. Like I said, I did only watch this HBO Max to get their perspective of of the investigators that are talking about the case, stuff like that. So um, it, it's just very weird. You know, like if the walls were thin and if they didn't hear anything, that just shows like okay, the murderer did knew how to murder someone without waking up people. Mm-hmm. So, like, Curl said, the guy was smart. He's a very intelligent guy. So, like, he knew what he wanted to do and how to do it. Um, you know, if hearing someone like if you're alone or you're with your roommate and you hear someone say, "Hey, don't worry, I'm here to help you." You're, you're, either your body's gonna freeze, or you're gonna be like, "Who the hell is that?" And you're gonna run to that voice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But did the roommates get like interviewed and questioned about everything? I, I I'm don't... sure they did, but they, but they're, uh, they're on the down low. They're like not even right. They're so like, but trying to just distance themselves from it. But right now. but. Not not bashing them, but it's like help with the case. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause like, uh, who was the who was the 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 friend that was ha- that had a stalker? Who was it? Maddie. It was Maddie. Maddie. Uh, I know she reported it a few times, and like, it was like, hey, who was who was your stalker? You know, the cops were probably like, there's no, there's no proof of you having a stalker and you know, stuff like that. So. You know, what if he was a stalker? What if he was the one that followed them on Instagram? You know, it's there could be many, many things, many things on on him. Um, but yeah, like if they didn't hear anything from you know from those thin walls, like he, the murderer knew what he was doing. Um, and especially there's no other proof of of him being the murderer. He was really smart on how he cleaned up. Um, yeah, you know, maybe maybe there was blood. But I, like I said, I don't remember what else they found in the trash bin. But if he was cleaning up, he did some very good detail on his car and no other clothing because he was all in black. So mm-hmm. no shoe that matches the footprint that they found. Um, no knife, no other clothing, just gloves and cleaning products from him cleaning his car. Maybe the clothing that he had uh, had blood, and there was blood stains in the car, and he 
he cleaned it up. He maybe put his clothes on fire, like he burned them, to where they couldn't find any other proof. The knife could have been thrown somewhere um, in between his, his road trip. On his road trip, he probably stopped at a few places, like, hey, that I just got to do something real quick. And maybe he threw away some of that clothing in each state mm-hmm. or each city that he was traveling to. That's probably what could have happened. And then the next stop was like, hey, I'm at this home. I'm going to clean my car. Because if they do end up finding it's me, there's no proof of it being me. There's no blood stains. There's nothing, no proof that came from that home. That's my final thoughts on it. Yeah, it's very like, it's very interesting to know what goes on in those kind of people's minds. Like, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll say this to kind of end my thoughts on it. Um, I do find it extremely strange that in the things that I watched, there wasn't more of an emphasis on the remakes. There wasn't more of an emphasis on their detailed events and them getting like heavily interviewed. Um, Because my assumption, if I'm in a position to investigate this in some way, I'm grilling those people first because they were there so mm-hmm. i don't know why that wasn't more you know out there more in public view that didn't make any sense to me um because just the little tidbits that i've heard that came out it, i'm just like uh, that's so you know that's such a small amount of information that doesn't really help anything you know what i mean like there had to be more that was going on there i just i don't know And I understand it's a traumatic event. I get it. But, you know, when you're potentially trying to find the killer, right, or the murderer, I should say, um, you know, you need that information to be brought to the police immediately. And I feel like there should have been more that was said. I think there is more to be said. But whether they're in on it or not, not saying anything like that, I just, there's got to be more. There's got to be more to it. And, Unfortunately, everything that I just hear, it just seems like, and, you know, I'm not trying to bring, like, some type of conspiracy to this, right? But just the detailed account of one of them saying that the guy had bushy eyebrows, I think that just played into this guy, you know, his description, and they just found somebody and they could match it up correctly with the other things that they have to their disposal, the car and stuff, whatever. Um, and I think that just works better for police. You're like, okay, well, we got the description. She said, push your eyebrows. We got the car. It matches this guy. Boom. Like, that's all we need. And I think that's all we're pretty much going to get as, um, people that are viewing this whole process and seeing exactly what's going to happen next. It's just, it sucks. Cause like I said, multiple times, I just don't think they have enough. And I think this guy is probably going to walk or maybe what they have is enough in the eyes of a jury or not even a jury, but the judge, right? Um, maybe the judge is like, Nope, that's good for me. You suck. I'm some sending you away. Like, see you later. Uh, I just, I don't know, but I think the guy's smart. Like we already talked about, he has good lawyers. So it's going to be very, very hard for them to be saying they're going to send him off and he's gone forever. And, I think he's getting child um, first degree murder on each each person. No, so, no, no. Um, crazy because he'd have to show and he'd have to show premeditation on all four of them, mm-hmm. and I don't think that he had. I don't think, I don't think he intended to kill all four. I think he intended to just kill Maddie and Kaylee was there. It, intended or not, like. The first, my assumption is the first two people that he killed was, was Zana and Ethan. So, like, if his attention was to kill Maddie, why did he kill those two? Right? So, I I just think he was just, like, he, it, it's, my dad told me this, is like, there's always a copycat of something, Right? You know, these murderers, like, they get off, like, oh, cool, this person this person that I look up to did this to their victims. I'm going to one-up that. 
you know, so I'm not saying that's probably what he was thinking, but like, you know, intentions were like he wanted to kill someone and that was four people. Um, you know, unfortunately that happened to all, all four of them. Um, I wish it didn't happen to them at all. I wish it just never happened, but, uh, like why? You know, maybe he was obsessed of the the girls and he's like i want you guys i don't want no one else to have you guys but why did the other two live why did he go to those rooms um like why choose those rooms there's other rooms in that house and two lived out of the six so and, and why are those two not getting interviewed if you knew your friend had, uh, or your roommate friend had a, a stalker, who was the stalker that you guys heard about? So, like, you know what I mean? Like, like, Curl's saying, like, you know, why aren't they pushing to interview these two? Why are these two on the down low and trying to get away from uh, this case? Who knows? Who knows? Um, it, it's, oh, I hope he doesn't walk. If it is him, if he does walk, or... It, they might say, okay, well, there's not, there's not enough proof. We're going to give you a lighter sentence because you, you just, it's just strange that this kind of describes that you, you were the, the killer. Like who knows, who knows what's going to happen. I mean, if there's not proof beyond a reasonable doubt, then he'll get acquitted. hundred percent. Yeah. They uh, just can't, they can't just like sentence him if there's not proof beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the burden of proof in a criminal case. Um, and it sucks because if he does get acquitted and there's new evidence that comes after his acquittal, he can't be tried again. He is protected under a Sixth Amendment right. Which that has Ew. happened in a lot of cases. That, yeah. All right. Well, um, Curls, any final thoughts on this? No, I mean, I, look, I, I found it to be interesting case. Yeah. Um, I think my biggest issue with everything, and this is just as a case in the whole, and, you know, from my viewing uh, perspective, um, I think the things that I watched didn't really make it as engaging, right? Because I'm not looking to watch one of these things like, oh, my God, this is exciting to watch, right? Because it's a tragic thing that happened, and... But there is an engagement factor to it, and that's why they make these things, because they want you to be invested in to what happened, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done with production and how they put things together. Um, I think just the way that it was put together for me with the, the first 48, I think it was, um, mm -hmm. it, they just didn't really make it super engaging for me. Um which is fine, right? It, it's supposed to just give information about some things. And it kind of just took a little bit of digging for me to get, like, you know, really rolling and understanding a lot of this stuff. And, yeah, I, the thing that sucks the most, though, out of what I just said and everything else that we just talked about is we really don't have any resolve in this whole case at all. <laughs> And I think that's what kind of takes me out of it too is the idea of okay, this tragic thing happened. They think it's this guy, but they can't really prove that it's this guy. So then we kind of just in limbo and we don't know what's going to happen next or when it's ever going to get uh, finished. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I. I found it to be intriguing. I appreciate Anna for kind of bringing this case to us because I know she's been very invested in it for a long time. So, yeah. 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 Anna, uh, your final thoughts? Oh, I have a lot of final thoughts, but uh, that would go on for a long time. <laughs> uh, just, it's very sad. I really, the reason why I'm like so passionate about this case is because I really resonate with Xana. I feel like, I feel like Zayn and I would have been like really. I feel like we would have been like the best of friends. I feel like our personality is like I see myself and her. So it's just like, it's just it just hurts to know that like. I mean, they're all wonderful people, but like I just res I resonate with her a lot. It's just I don't know. 
You know what I mean? Like they're each, they're each unique in their own ways. So it's just like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like you, like you could resonate with one of them. Like it might not be the same way that I feel about. You know what I mean? Like it's just I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to explain. All right, well, that's it, guys. Well, thank you guys for listening in. Uh, this was episode two of Investor Gamers. Uh, we will have another one, another episode next week. Um, Curls will be choosing his case that he wants us to deep dive and investigate. All right, guys, um, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow Anna and Curls on their social um, in the link description down below. But we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.